we have the um, reaction from UEFA as well this evening, from the UEFA president, Alexander Seferin. We will take all the sanctions that we can, he says, and we will inform you as soon as we have a clear answer. My opinion is that as soon as possible, the players have to be banned from all our competitions. I cannot stress more strongly UEFA and the footballing world are united against the disgraceful, self-serving proposals we have seen, fueled purely by greed. It's a nonsense of a project, he says. We will not allow them to take this away from us. Earlier, we'd heard statements yesterday, in fact, from the Premier League. There are six clubs in one corner. There are 14 right now in another. And the chairman of one of those, the Crystal Palace chairman, Steve Parrish, is joining us tonight on Monday Night Football. Steve, thank you so much for being with us this evening. It's a sad day. How has it come to this? Well, we all know it's been brewing for a long time, don't we? You know, from the leaking of Project Big Picture, um, you know, the constant um, things that we deal with in the Premier League, really, which are the attempts to, to load the dice. I think some, we might look back on this, though, and think that this is, is actually quite a good day for football, or yesterday. Um, because, you know, what we've seen is, is, is people massively overplaying their hand, in my view. And, and it's quite strange because, you know, they were getting their own way on so many things. I mean, not many people know. I was sort of shouting in the wilderness about the fact that <clears throat> they were looking to get this coefficient through so that they could leapfrog teams in some instances. Even next year in the Champions League, I don't think people realise that 30% of the money will be awarded to teams based on their history based on their history of being in the league over the last few years. So, you know, they've been chipping away in the background and they've actually been by stealth getting these things through. And it's been very difficult sometimes to get people to pay attention because they're quite remote, they're in a few years' time. So it feels like yesterday at the moment was a bit of a gift. Um, I don't know what day they thought that anybody would react well to this or it would all be OK. But, you know, to unite Sadiq Khan, Boris Johnson, Macron... Jurgen Klopp, every football fan in the country, you guys, every chairman other than the top six, every chief exec, together on a Sunday afternoon is quite some talent. Um, and, you know, I, I've never... I was actually really, really encouraged by the outpouring from, from everybody. And, and I think that, you know, we may actually get into a very good place, I hope, after this. So right now, as things stand, Steve, are you quite confident that this will not happen? Well, look, this is Kerry Packer's circus all over again. I mean, you know, if these guys want to... I can't even imagine that they're going to get five teams that will join them. So they'll play in some quasi-friendly competition, you know, with all of their players banned from um, uh, playing in internationals, with all of the clubs banned from their leagues. You know, I mean, of course, you can't say never and that they might not be prepared to do it. And then even then, I'm not sure that they quite understand where governments stand in this. I mean... You know, the Premier League is the jewel in the crown uh, in many ways, you know, of, of, of England and Great Britain. You know, it's a fantastic outwardly looking piece of soft power that we, we have around the world. You know, I just don't think the British government are going to let that walk away. I don't think, you know, other governments in Europe are going to allow these things to happen. You know, what about clubs like Ajax who are going to be permanently locked out of this thing? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, they spent six months thinking about this or, or, or even longer. It, it just strikes me as extraordinary, the miscalculation of the public mood. Steve, these top six uh, mafia, as we call them earlier in the show, are getting criticised for being selfish, looking after themselves. But the other 14 clubs in the Premier League, a lot of them were asking for null and void last season. You've also not helped the EFL clubs. Is that hypocritical when you criticise these top six clubs? Well, I don't think that's true, Jamie. We have helped the EFL clubs. You know, look, in terms of ongoing support, I think you'll find the Premier League filter more money down into the lower leagues um, than any of the other major leagues in Europe. We certainly give far more money down to the lower leagues than in solidarity. And when I'm in the Premier League meetings, I vote as if I wasn't. You know, I vote as one of the 72 clubs that aren't in there because I know I might be back there in no time. I vote on the basis that I have a duty of care to the game and that if it could be Nottingham Forest or Leeds when they weren't in the league or Aston Villa have won the Champions League who are voting on these issues. And I encourage everybody in the league to do that and take their responsibility seriously and not be bullied 
constantly by these guys. So we represent the rest of the football pyramid because we're not stupid enough to not understand that we, that, that we might be back there. And we represent the fans. And every single thing that we do in the Premier League is open to public scrutiny. And, and that's the way that it should be. And we have enormous fan pressure because if you guys are quite rightly pointed out, you know, this is all about the fans. I'm a fan. This is my club I've supported since I was four years old. I'm involved in football because I think that there's a dream, as naive as I might be, that one day we might play in Europe. What is the point for all of us if that dream is, is, is taken away? So, you know, I think that looking back on some of the single issues, yes, you know, when the co-op are taking business rate relief, and making 128 million in profit, you know, when we were uniquely being asked to bail out totally um, clubs in the championship that had often been profligate in the way that they run their business, notwithstanding we did come up with help and we should come up with help. Um, you know, I think that if you if you just look at that issue, which was debated and we got to the right answer, but generally we do get to the right answer. That's I think it's 99%. Steve. Steve, that was a criticism you received, wasn't it? Because it, this was around the issue of the, the pandemic and, and coming the clubs coming to you for bailouts. And the quote that you, you gave was the supermarkets aren't instructed to help out the corner shops when it was the championship clubs coming to you at a time of crisis. I think that's that was Jamie's point about is, is this all a bit about self-service here? Oh, look, every single uh, club, you've got to make sure they first don't go out of business. You know, if, if you guys don't think that in some ways this is born of the pressures of the pandemic, you know, these big clubs have lost a lot of money. And the other side of this, we've got to look at a way of trying to connect the dots and bring us all back together. These clubs have lost a lot of money and somebody's turning up and saying that you can have a £350 million cheque each. Um, and, 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 and that's going to cure a lot of problems in these clubs who are, you know, are hurting financially. You know, in the end, we have to balance the books somehow and at some point. We did help the lower leagues. We should continue to help the lower leagues because I might be back there in no time. So, of course, we need to support the football pyramid. And I would never vote against uh, a change to relegation. We understand the duty of care we have to the game in, in that league. But this is beyond the power. This is incredible what's going on. You know, for these clubs to want to invent a tournament based on an arbitrary period of history to leapfrog clubs in Europe that have a much stronger history over a longer period of time and just say we're the gilded elite and it will never change is abhorrent to every single football fan in this country and every single football fan around Europe. Steve, you've got a meeting tomorrow with 14 clubs, the six uh, that are obviously looking to break away, haven't been invited or they've not turned up for whatever reason. What is actually, what's on the agenda? What are you looking to achieve out of the meeting? And is it a case of that you're going to look to punish these six clubs, or are you going to look to maybe put an olive branch out there and sort of bring them back to the table? Well, of course we want them back to the table. You know, of course, you know, these are massive brands. You know, they are very successful in, you know, in, 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 in some of them forever, most of them over recent periods. You know, we need them in our league. Um, we, you know, the Champions League need them as part of the, of the Champions League. Um, and we have to find a way of understanding the issues that, that, that drove them to this, but equally we have to be strong. And I think the outpouring that we've had against this, you know, does give us some strength now to talk to them and say, look, you know, we are 14 clubs that we aren't currently as big as you. We understand that. Historically, some of the clubs here have been as, as big as you. And there are clubs that aren't even in the league right now that are even, you know, bigger than some of us. And, and you have to take us into account and, and you have to take the, the whole of football's views into account. And hopefully, hopefully you are already working on it. Hopefully we can find, you know, a resolution. The president of UEFA has described Agnelli and Ed Woodward as snakes. How would you describe them? Well, look, I mean, I think there are a lot of personal relationships that have been fractured by this. And... You know, that's, that's another thing that sometimes it, it, it's difficult. You know, there, there's many meetings that I've sat in and I've said, guys, just say what you want. You know, you want, to, you want us to keep going and doing research until it says what it is that you want, that you want to sell your own games, that you want to do X, Y, Z. You know, um, there, there is something that's a little bit disingenuous about it, but we understand that people want to do the best for their business. We understand that people want to um try and change things and we should be open to new ideas gary you've got a lot of new ideas and a lot of things that you want to suggest and you want to change we can't just shut everything down and, and, and not listen and within this there might be things that you know that we can help these guys with so you know we need to go back and we need to look at it but certainly nasa at, um, at psg and Bayern 
you know, really do have to be applauded for the position that they've taken. Um, it's an incredibly strong position. And, and I understand that in the case of PSG, for loyalty to um, his, um, his relationship with, 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 with me and Mr Seferin. So, you know, all power to those people that didn't do it. That could be um, Ed Woodward on the phone, Steve. I'm not sure, trying to convince you. Uh, <laughs> just w with regard to what Gary was asking you there about this meeting tomorrow, if the worst did happen... And if the six are intent on going ahead with this, as it, as it seems like, as we stand right now, they are, would you, as the other 14, have the power to expel them from the Premier League? Well, look, we, we, we would need to talk about that and I would need to take, it for, take advice from the Premier League. As you understand, you know, I, I didn't swallow the rule book of the Premier League and I, and I, don't, I don't know um, the powers, but, I mean, certainly, you know, in the end, if, if they've got the authority to run off and start their own league and cancel the agreement they've got with us, then I'm sure the rest of us have got the authority to, to, to start our own one as well. But none of us want that, right? And, we, 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 you know, we've got to get around the table and we've got to try and find a solution. Firstly, UEFA, you know, have, have got to find a solution because in the end, right now, it isn't our league they're walking away from, right? They don't actually want to walk away from our league. They want to walk away from the Champions League. So... Um, I think that there's a lot of um, things that can happen before we get to a point where we, we, we have to take those kind of sanctions.